If you missed our last video, you should definitely go check it out. We went for an epic night dive, Gary finally decided to shave, and we volunteered at the local animal shelter. We met some friends for a little hike and had the most fun celebrating my birthday. But the best part? During a free diving session, we had some unexpected visitors. Humpback whales. Hi, we're Brooke and Gary. A year ago, we traded the American dream for our dream. Welcome to One Life. Today, we're going diving with Golden Rock again. <laughs> Surprise! Another day, another dive. Hey guys, today we are going to be going to the Charlie Brown. Uh, she is 300 feet in length uh, and she lies at 30 meters of water, 100 feet deep. Uh, so she's a nice deep dive and a really huge wreck. Uh, it's encrusted with coral since she's been down there for so long and it's an absolute gorgeous dive. Let's go dive. As we've done so many times now, we loaded up our gear and headed out on Stumpy, chatting with our dive friends on the short ride out. The Charles L. Brown, known locally as the Charlie Brown, was a cable laying ship built in Italy in 1954. She was operated for cable repair by a subsidiary of AT&T from the 1980s until 2003, when she was retired from service. The island of St. Eustatius purchased her for just one US dollar, and on July 25th, 2003, she was sunk to her final resting place. This dive is known as one of the top wreck dives in all of the Caribbean. The clear waters that surround Stacia provide some breathtaking views of the massive ship, and the artificial reef provides shelter to numerous species of fish. This dive is certainly one of the most memorable we have ever experienced. Today is our last day of diving in Stacia, so it's our Thanks last for chance for a blue bead. One. <laughs> Hold up, a blue bead? What are we talking about? Well, instead of Googling it, why don't we let a local explain it? So yeah, this island was, was the biggest port in the world uh, back in the 1700s. On, on not, uh, a lot of other small islands, the slaves were revolting. And here, the Dutch were like, uh, we don't want that. So we want to pay him, but we're not going to pay him with money. So they paid him in blue beads. They're made in Amsterdam, it's glass. Uh, so they blow them on a stick and they would break them off. And they would bring them over and pay the slaves in them. The legend goes that blue bead hole is right out there. The legend says that once they got emancipated, they all took their blue beads and the last protest, they awesome. threw them in. If you go there, you'll find blue beads for sure. Bluebead Hole is an area just outside of the bay and is what we call a muck dive. No reef, no shipwrecks, just sandy and grassy flat bottom. The boat dropped us at a starting point and we cruised along the bottom with the boat following us above. Constantly scanning the bottom, we swam along looking for anything blue nestled in the sand. We saw quite a few interesting fish, critters, and even came across some artifacts. But our search for blue beads was fruitless and we came up empty handed. But that's okay, because kind of like an underwater Easter egg hunt, the real fun is in the search itself.
Well, our dives today were awesome. And since it's our second to last day here, we're gonna try to make the most of it. And there is a taste of Stacia, like a food fair tonight. So we're gonna go over to that. But we're pretty sad that it's our last dives today. All right, let's go get some dinner. We went to Sersha to pick up Bo and Brandy and then headed to the dinghy dock to catch up with our Golden Rock family. Gary hopped on the back of Dave's scooter and the rest of us piled into Sarah's car. We weren't entirely sure what Taste of Cultures was, but we imagined it to be a lot like food truck events back in the States. Upon arrival, we were greeted with lots of smiles and the most delicious looking food. Stacia's Taste of Cultures is a cross-cultural community event. Can you believe this tiny island with a population of only around 3,500 has over 52 different nationalities? Each stand showcased a different national dish. We, of course, had to try a little bit of them all. From conch and dumplings, to ribs, to lo mein, this was certainly a unique culinary experience. We spent the night eating way too much, drinking, and visiting with friends. But the best part for us was seeing all these nationalities come together and participate as one. Good night! We are getting ready for our passage to either Puerto Rico or Ceiba, we're not sure which, but Gary is changing our oil on our fuel filters and I've been emailing and filling out all the forms to see if we can get entry into Ceiba. And if so, we'll leave for Seba tomorrow, but lots to do because we've been sitting at Anchor for two months here in Stacia. So lots to do to get ready. Just got done changing our engine fuel filter. You can probably hear the engine running now. Seems to be running okay. This was the old filter. And this is what a new filter looks like. So it was definitely time. There was also a little bit of like goo and algae in the bowl. So I took the bowl apart, cleaned that out, and hopefully we're good to go now gonna let it run for about a half hour or so just to make sure it's all good then we should be all set for our passages with heavy hearts we stowed away all our dive gear to get ready for our upcoming sail we just got the okay from Seba that we are free to go so we are checking out of Stacia I don't know how I feel about it we're really gonna miss this place <laughs> Customs was a breeze and gave us all our necessary paperwork so we could arrive in Seba. All right, we are all checked out of Seisha. So now it's time to go say goodbye to all our friends. How much were our harbor fees? It cost us 285 US dollars to stay in Seisha for about nine weeks. It's not too bad. Not the cheapest ever, but not the most expensive ever either. Worth it. Worth every penny. The Golden Rock Dive Crew came over for dinner one last time. Unfortunately, Captain Dave wasn't able to join us for dinner, but he did make it out for drinks later that evening. dinner, we headed out to our favorite bar to say our see you laters to the rest of our friends. We only had one last night in Stacia, and we absolutely had to make the most of it.
it's safe to assume we partied our asses off and shut the bar down. All right, well, last night was a success. We had a really good time and we drank way too much and we know better than to do this before a sale. But we have to go to SEPA because we checked out of Stacia. It's gonna be hard to leave this place. And I was hoping I'd be too hungover to cry, but bye Stacia. It's been fun. Stacia Harbor, Stacia Harbor, Stacia Harbor. This is a sailing vessel, one life outbound. When we started on this journey, the island of Stacia was what we were searching for. The way people make you feel here is indescribable and something we will never forget. Thank you, St. Eustatius, for showing us what it means to be united as one. Feeling sad and hungover, we were very grateful our sail to Seba was a short one. <laughs> Just a couple hours later, Stacia was slowly fading away in the distance, and we started to see the island of Seba. As we rounded the corner in Seba, our personal welcoming committee came to greet us and help us grab a morning ball. Seba, at only five square miles, is composed of a single volcano. Once situated, we took the long, wet, and bumpy dinghy ride from the mooring field into town. We made it to Seba safely. <laughs> Despite our hangovers, we are feeling good now, so we're gonna check in and then do a little exploring around this town. Yeah, it was a nice sale. We each only threw up once. <laughs> so that's a pretty good day for us. Pretty good day. <laughs> We completed our paperwork and we were free to roam around. We started making our way up the steep incline when who other but the customs officer stopped to give us a ride. The first stop on the way up from the port is ironically named the bottom, even though it's about 1,000 feet above sea level. We took a quick look at the map and decided to do a little exploring. As we wandered around town, looking for a place to eat, we couldn't help but be charmed by all of the matching buildings, white with green trim and red roofs. Seba, with a population of only around 2,000, is a municipality within the Netherlands and is known for its School of Medicine. We happened to stumble upon Lollipops Inn, the only building in town with blue and yellow trim instead of green. Upon entry, we were greeted by, of course, 
Lollipop herself, who welcomed us into her bed and breakfast and showed us around. The view off her back porch was absolutely stunning and made the perfect backdrop for a cup of hot tea. And what else do sailors want after a sail? Hot homemade pizza. After Lollipop's amazing hospitality, we made our way back to the dinghy dock just in time for this. What are you guys doing over there? Hiding from the raid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just coming back from a nice We hope you join us next time as we explore the tiny, charming island of Seba. A big thank you to all of our One Life crew. We have the most kick-ass friends and family. To score some SV One Life gear for yourself, head over to svonelife.com.